Here we go. It's Friday. We're continuing the project. I'm Mr. G. We're at the home shop. All right. So this is what's going on. This is the uh, engine with piston delete. So there's no piston in there. We're just using the case for the bearings. So right here is a nice surface to get on, right? A nice surface, and we're gonna use those surfaces. We're gonna use that to put like a, a bar that goes up here and hooks up to the drill over a bridge, and then a nice, like a bar over here. And so this is the crankshaft right there, like this. So I did some modifications to the case years ago. I put studs, but now that I put those studs, they don't fit through the holes the regular size. I fixed one problem and I have another problem now. I drilled it out so that the studs would fit. By the way, this is not the stock setup. I'm done. But now, when I move this, it doesn't move freely. It's got like a, almost like a break on it. It might be pressing up against it, so I might have to put a gap here of some kind of maybe gasket paper or some cardboard. Actually, that would fit. That's actually pretty good. Just make it so that there's a gap there and then this will open up again. It should move freely. That's going to cost me efficiency if the bearings aren't working right. And they're not even roller bearings, they're plain bearings. So it's just metal on metal. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so I pried it open. Now you can see. That's how it should be. Believe it or not, this actually wasn't the problem. The real problem was I left the timing gear in there. Well, there's no timing anymore, so you don't need timing gear. Well, yeah, you could see it was right up against it. Okay, yeah, that's that's what's going on. By the way, this needs oil. We're gonna have to put a seal anyway. You see, the oil seeps in there. This conversion is having more problems than a modern age relationship, but hey, we're getting it done. Perfect. That's fine with me. Nice. You gotta love how it sounds like a rattling snake. Reminds me of Max. So uh, I gotta get another one of these. This is uh, probably seven eighths, and maybe this is less than that. We'll measure it up, and we'll make we'll place the order. Hey, this is Mark from the Shadow Makers. If there's anything in this video that you'd like to learn, Mr. G offers classes at the link below that you can sign up for. Enjoy the video. Okay, so the whole idea behind this is that it's a piston delete. No piston, but the same setup of crankshaft. And then we're gonna put the drill on there as if it's a drill start, but not a drill start, a drill power. And then we're gonna run it off of the wall. What's cool about this is you're gonna, everything you find on here is what you would find. Let me talk to the camera for a second. Everything you find on this situation is the same thing you'd find on an electric car. So really, this project is like excellent for learning how to do your own conversion. Um, uh, you know, location pins has to do with adapter plates. In a way, this is an adapter plate so that you can run this mower on the deck, see, of a mower, so that you could run it like that. Did you ever do Legos? It's like a three-dimensional pu puzzle. Only the only the pieces are made already and you have to modify them or use them in a way that's creative that serves the purpose. You can't just throw stuff together, you know, it won't work. So, all right, and you have to test and verify everything you do. There's a thing called process elimination where you remove things one by one to see if this is causing the problem inside of your experiment. So I took off the flywheel, I got it out of the crankcase, this in here to see what is it that's binding and you see now it's stuck, you see? diameter changes from this diameter to something a little bit slightly bigger and that's what grabs that bearing and, and holds on to it. So now what I got to do is get this apart and then I'm going to take down a little bit of that of the surface so that I have more room. That would be perfect if it was on a lathe. Uh, hmm, I got a friend who does have a lathe. The gear that was meant for the uh, timing gear. You see, what it does is it it places like a spacer on top of here, which slides. And that's why I put the grease. The red is the grease. So I put the grease. Now it's built for this. So it's not like I invented or I'm compensating, like saying, oh, well, I'll just use grease. No, it's, it's meant to slide on there. It's a smooth surface on this gear. The only thing left is that 
I'll run it on 110, but when then we want to run it on this inverter and a battery right here, this guy. So I need to make a holder for that. And when we'll just bolt it to the bridge basically. And if that battery's not big enough, then we'll bolt it onto a car battery. But basically we're gonna run this thing and mow the lawn. I don't think it's gonna last that long, but we can predict how long. I gave the motor to Mark, so we don't have that motor anymore in the shop. So while Mark is making us an adapter, we're over here trying to test out the drill. All right, here we go. And we realized something. The reason that it's vibrating is because it's unbalanced now. Watch. This thing has worse vibration than a Nokia cell phone on vibrate. Because there's no piston now, now it's not balanced. So I gotta cut these off or reduce them. More work. Everything's good, it's working good. It's not balanced any longer. Okay, so just to show you, see? There's those counterbalances. And then what swings up to the top here, that's the journal. And that would be this, which holds on to the back end of the piston. But this is a piston delete, so we're trying to do this without pistons. It still moves, but it's really not as much. Closer to balance than it ever was. Okay, so this is what I meant by balancing the piston, or balancing the crank, you see? It's pretty close to balance. Uh, it sort of just pulls it down. Now I started to take some material off of there, but if I took the connecting rod off, Watch. There you go. Afterwards, Mr. G was testing out a prototype of the frame that holds the drill. To making sure everything worked as planned, he started welding everything together, cutting some pieces out to be used as the switch. I didn't tighten it yet, but you see how that moves up the trigger? All right, check this out, Instagram. All right, we got it all hooked up. And we got the throttle right here. Here we go. So just an update, this is actually kind of cool. I just use a grinder to cut all these pieces and you know, a drill press and whatnot. And now what happens is, I didn't place it in there yet, but basically if you put it here, I'll just try and hold it. Uh, it'll pull that down. Well, it's not, it's not placed yet, but it'll, it'll work, see? Watch. There, see it pulls down the handle. And then you know on the other side, What's going on is that it's, when it goes down, it's actually pushing the trigger of the drill. All right, we're gonna run it on battery power. So I got the battery hooked up, see? These leads, they're like jumpers. Then they go to the inverter, and then from the inverter, plug it in, that's the drill. And then, uh, same deal, you just pull on the cable. All right, so we're gonna run it on the battery. Just flip this thing on, here we go. Finally, after the billion different mistakes that we had to fix and the billion different times I had to call G to figure out how to edit this video, we finally finished. Hey, it's Mr. G. All right, thanks for watching that episode. I really appreciate that. And if you're interested in learning how all those parts and pieces work, I have classes on my website, uh, Engines 101, Welding 101, I have Electric Vehicles 101, all of which will get you to the point to converting your car or learning mechanical things in fabrication. Remember to tune in next episode we're going to collaborate with Zach and Jesse from the Now You Know guys who are going to help us test out this lawnmower at their place. Hey, right, stay tuned, thanks a lot, and I'll see you later. Plus, if you put a comment in, I read all the comments, so I'd love to hear what you think. Okay, see you later.